Hello everyone this is part 4 of what if Naruto was sealed because he was too powerful, and I hope you guys enjoy this video and to like, to subscribe, to see more comment down below. On an exam stadium for the test they were informed was going to happen were surprised to see one Naruto Uzumaki, already sitting down in the center of the arena, decked out in a dark red muscle shirt and pants, hit I ate as a belt, seemingly in a meditative state. As more and more people filed in a smattering of comments regarding why the demon brat was here and what the test was exactly. Naruto was seated under the tree in the arena currently resting. The five days of pranks prior to this were him actually training himself. He had been neglecting the basics of his ninja arts in exchange for power and jutsu, something he blamed on his other side. After fighting Kabuto and remembering how he used to be he remembered the words told to him in his formulative years, the ninja with stealth and surprise on his side should be able to win without ever using a single jutsu. He had spent the days progressively stepping up the difficulty of his pranks, and much to his delight he had never been caught once, even when deliberately provoking a response that alerted others of his direct location, except for the pranks on Sasuke, no test was intended, that was purely for him, it was just sheer fun. Around 9 o'clock the familiar bear-masked Anbu of Sunids arrived next to him. Naruto stood up to properly greet the man, Hello Kuma-san. Bar-chan send you to get me again. The Anbu nodded, yes, Hokage-sama would like to know if you would like her to tell you the rules of engagement prior to the beginning of your test. Naruto shook his head, no, she'll just end up explaining it to everyone after they all arrive anyway, there's no need to make her do it twice so I'll just wait. Kuma nodded and shunshined out of Naruto's space, leaving him to continue meditating until he would inevitably end up being interrupted again. The next interruption occurred at around 9.30 when Kurenai led her team into the arena. Naruto's focus was broken by Kiba loudly bragging, oh man, we're all fighting Naruto. What did he do to piss the Hokage off like that to get this to happen to him? Kurenai looked over to Naruto who waved back at her in indifference before returning to his meditation. She looked down at Kiba, Kiba, do not underestimate him here. He already defeated you once already, you shouldn't do the same thing twice in this instance. Kiba smirked in confidence, he got in a few lucky shots last time. This one won't last nearly as long, me and Akamaru will knock him out before he can start playing his games. The QB scoffed in Naruto's mind, what a loud mutt. I hope you fight him first so you can shut him up and I don't have to hear him bark anymore. Naruto smirked slightly, calm down QB. They'll all get my point in a few minutes. Shino looked over at Naruto who was still seated under his tree, Kurenai-sensei, I don't understand why we're all fighting Uzumaki-san in the first place. You said all of the teams would be participating, that is illogical. Why would all of the teams be needed to fight just him? Kurenai looked at her sunglasses sporting Genin, the Hokage gave him this option last week during a meeting and he took it. I don't understand just why it's happening in the first place but all you can do is fight him at your best. Shino nodded, I wasn't planning on doing anything other than that. Kurenai looked at Hinata who was trying her best to look anywhere but at the blonde sitting under the tree, Hinata. You will probably have to fight him too. Don't let anything cloud your mind on this. If you don't fight him seriously then there is a good chance that he will defeat you. Hinata nodded, but her mind was a wreck, I have to fight Naruto-kun. I, I can't possibly bring myself to do anything to hurt him. What would I do if I injured him? Would I ever have a chance with him then? Soon after the entrance of Team 8, Asuma brought his own Genin team into the fold, with Shikamaru leading the pack, this is so troublesome. Why are we here? You got all gung-ho today about dragging us to the arena. Asuma took a drag of his cigarette as he brought his Genin over near Kurenai, you're here to fight Naruto. He'll be taking you all on one at a time so it shouldn't be too much trouble if the order works out the way it should. Ino looked over to her fellow blonde sitting under the tree, Naruto. Why would we all be fighting Naruto? What's the point? He might be able to beat one of us, maybe two but that's pushing it. There's no way he can beat our entire team. Kurenai chimed in, he's not really fighting your entire team, he's really supposed to be fighting everyone, your team, my team, Guy's team, and Kakashi's other kids. 
Seeing the stunned looks on the faces of Team Tenshi glared at Asuma, you didn't tell them this was happening. Asuma shrugged, like Ino said, there's no way he could beat any more than two of them at the most. Shikamaru muttered out another, troublesome, while Choji stood next to him eating chips. Naruto was now analyzing his upcoming opponents. He noticed that Shikamaru and Shino were subtly doing the same of him and he mentally groaned, man I hope the dumb, stupid ones fight me first so I can get them out of the way. No matter when I fight Shino or Shikamaru it's going to suck because they're already thinking on how to beat me. I hope I get someone like Kiba or Neji first, they might still underestimate me and I can just run right through them. QB was seemingly getting excited as the time for the fights drew nearer, hey Kit, are you going to use the trigger? Naruto paled, hell no I'm not using the trigger. Not here in front of all of these people, and not on Genin. Are you insane? That would kill them. Naruto could feel the grin on the QB's face, I know. Naruto shook his head free of thoughts just as an unmistakable shade of green entered the scene. Guy, glistening smile included, ambled into the stadium with Rock Lee on crutches, an uncaring looking Neji, and Tenten who actually waved at Naruto. Eyes widening, as he didn't really expect that, he gave her a small smile and waved back to her. Kuranai was still mad at Asuma for taking this so casually, Guy, I hope you informed your students about what was going on today. Guy gave her a thumbs up, of course I did. It would have been a crime not to let my adorable students know that they would have an opportunity to fight today. My only regret is that Lee Kun here could not have a chance to test his flames of youth against Naruto Kun. Neji ignored the continued ramblings of Guy and Lee and looked over to the placid blonde under the tree. Taking note of his new look and the sword strapped to his back Neji narrowed his eyes, why are we all here just to fight Naruto? At 10.24 on the dot guess who managed to find his way into the arena. Being dragged by Sasuke, Kakashi let out a nervous eye smile, sorry we were almost late. I accidentally covered both my eyes with my headband this morning and by the time I thought about it I was on top of the Hokage monument. Sasuke growled at the excuse while Sakura shook her head, then you should have seen the massive banner up there telling everyone about this. Kakashi smiled at her, ah, but I did, that's why I found you too remember. Tsunade, with Shizune behind her arrived with a deadpan expression on her face, this isn't the kind of thing that I'm going to have to get used to with you Kakashi is it? Kakashi smiled at her, no, no, I'm usually much later. After a round of face faults all around Tsunade straightened up and faced the audience, projecting her voice to be easily heard, Ladies and gentlemen of Konohagakur no Sato, today we have a special attraction for all of you. You will get to see some of the most prominent genin in this village pitted against one lone genin in today's battles. She pointed out to the tree where Naruto had long since stood up and begun loosening up, the sole genin in question is Naruto Uzumaki. A chorus of boos rang out among the audience until Naruto used the technique Sunid had used to project her voice, ah shut the hell up. You miserable bastards. Sunid sweat dropped at Naruto's dismissal of the crowd, right, well then, the rules will be as follows. A one-on-one -on -one bout between Naruto and one of the genin to be selected by their sensei. If Naruto can defeat the opponent he is matched with he will be matched up with the next, and so on, and so forth until he is either defeated or runs through them all. She finished with a smirk. She motioned for someone to walk over, the proctor for the bouts will be Anko Matarashi. Anko came from the back smirking at the genin whose fights she would be refereeing. She turned to look out at Naruto, who was still stretching, all right Gaki, you've talked a big game and Ibiki seems convinced, let's see what you've got. Soon it turned to the junin who were conferencing amongst themselves, so have you decided who is first? They all nodded as Asuma stepped and whispered the decision in her ear. Sunid nodded and reprojected her voice, the first bout will be Naruto Uzumaki versus Sakura Haruno. All others clear the arena immediately. All of the other genin and their senseis made their way to the waiting area to watch the proceedings along with Sunid. As they cleared out it left Naruto standing out with Sakura and Anko. Naruto sighed and looked at Sakura, do you really want to do this? You can always just quit now. Sakura glared at him, are you saying that I'm too weak to fight you? I'm the same ranking as you, and I graduated at the top of the class, you were dead last. Naruto's eyes didn't leave her, I didn't say you were weak, you did, you're just weaker than me. And about the academy, I guess I could say, that everything I ever needed to know I learned in kindergarten. 
Anko looked between them, first match, Naruto Uzumaki vs Sakura Haruno. Hajime. Sunad looked at the Junin as Naruto and Sakura moved close to Anko to begin, why did you choose Sakura to lead off? Kakashi looked at her lazily, well we figured that while Naruto probably would more than likely win against her we were banking on him taking it somewhat easy on her due to her being on his team and all. Asuma nodded, it's common knowledge that he had a massive crush on her in the academy and even when they were assigned teams. We thought that this would force him to take some damage before kicking it in high gear to actively finish her. FWAP. Shusa, Naruto Uzumaki. What? Naruto looked down at the unconscious Sakura at his feet and then at Anko who was poking her with a stick. Anko looked up at Naruto and grinned widely, damn Gaki, what was that for? Naruto shrugged, what? That was a love tap. She just came rushing in with that academy cookie cutter style of taijutsu, and she had her guard so wide open. It was a jab. Who knew she had the chin of a five-year-old narcolepsy patient? Anko burst out in laughter at the casual way he handled that. Medics came out and carried her off quickly, clearing the arena once more. Naruto shook his head at the results of his first match. He looked up to the Junin with a deadpan expression, what the hell was that? I really hope you've got more for me than that or you can just mark me down as winning this whole thing right now. Anko tried to calm herself down from her laughing fit, Kakashi, that was pathetic. Was she supposed to actually do something out here against him? I don't think she could beat an academy student fighting like that. Sunid had to laugh at how easily Naruto dealt with his crush, as she saw the Junin looking on in surprise. Kakashi rubbed his visible eye, I didn't think it would be that fast. Asuma chuckled at Kakashi's expression, why, what happened? I blinked and I missed it. Kuranai looked at Kakashi suspiciously, Kakashi, that looked like a strictly academy attack. Have you taught her anything since she was on your team? Kakashi thought about it, define, anything. Sunad sighed, all right that was a waste of an introduction, who's next? Shizun handed Sunad the order that the Junin had written out, okay, Ino Yamanaka. Get down there. Naruto squinted to see Ino coming out to face him next. Naruto grumbled under his breath, so I'm getting all of the weak ones first. Okay, let's deal with that. Naruto hadn't moved an inch from his first fight so he simply stood and waited for Ino to take her position. Ino looked at Naruto smirking at him, I'm not as pathetic as forehead Naruto. Just give up, you won't beat me. At a glance Ino realized that Naruto's blue eyes were boring into her own without a hint of response. On the inside however, one could find Naruto rolling with laughter alongside the QB, she really thinks she can beat me. Are you kidding me? Hey QB are you ready? QB stopped laughing at the behest of its container, anytime kit. Go for it. Anko raised her hand up, second match, Naruto Uzumaki vs Ino Yamanaka. Hajime. Ino tensed and waited for Naruto to move, but it never came, aren't you going to fight me Naruto? Naruto shook his head, there's no point for me to attack you, it would be overkill seeing as how no matter what you did I could beat you in one move. Ino gritted her teeth, oh yeah. She brought her hands up in the famous sign of her family. Anoiki Yamanaka who had come to watch the fights alongside his teammates felt his heart stop when she made that sign, Ino no. Shintenshin no jutsu, mind body switch jutsu. Naruto didn't move as Ino let her spirit fly into his own. Upon contact Naruto slumped over. Kiba shook his head and laughed as he saw Naruto go limp, he actually stood still and let Ino hit him with that move. He was watching during the Chunin exam like the rest of us, he should know what it does. Shikamaru nodded, I was worried at first. I didn't know how Ino was going to get him to hold still to hit him with it, but he did most of the work for her. Asuma however wasn't so confident, oh Ino that was not a good idea. Anko walked over to Naruto's slumped over body and poked him in the head, hello. Which one of you brats is in there? Naruto stood up straight, it's me. Ino is in there being, entertained, in the confines of my mind. Anko shook her head, that's mean Gaki. You know why that isn't safe don't you? Naruto scoffed as he took out some ninja wire and walked towards Ino's body, well it was her own damn fault. No one told her to try and mind rape me, but she did anyway. It's not my problem that the only jutsu she knows isn't a battle jutsu. He began tying her up casually, call it. Anko nodded, Shusa, Naruto Uzumaki. 
After hearing that Eno broke out in a scream as she returned to her own body babbling about massacres and torture and all kinds of things. Naruto raised an eyebrow as the medic team escorted her off. QB what the hell did you do to her? QB was batting its tails in a pleased fashion. Well Kit, you told me not to kill her or maim her so I simply, directed, her to some of your older memories. You know, tried to show her just what a real shinobi is. Naruto felt like rubbing his temple, what older memories. Naruto knew the QB was having fun with this, just all of the fun ones. Like that time at Kumaneri no Kuni for example. Naruto blanched, Kumaneri no Kuni. Do you know how many of those motherfuckers I killed back there? You showed her ones like that. I think you might have given her PTSD or something. You know they'll blame us for that right? QB chuckled, well you did let me do it, so I think technically it is our fault anyway. Naruto ambled back over to Anko, I hate you, love you too Kit. The Junin in the waiting area all had grimaces on their faces. Naruto intentionally allowed Ino to use Shintenshin no Jutsu on him knowing that he had something of a natural defense for it. Kakashi looked at Ino being carried away, well that's two down and he didn't even have to do anything to win. Kuranai was a bit more upbeat about the whole situation, well at least next match I know he'll have to fight. Asuma looked at the fight order and nodded, there's no way he gets out of this one without some damage on him. Tsunid glanced at him briefly, send whoever it is down then. Kuranai walked off to fetch the next genin to fight. Naruto was once again standing by Anko who was looking at him, you know Gaki, if you actually want to get promoted from this then you're eventually going to have to, I don't know, fight. Naruto smirked at her, you're just bored. Anko waved her arms childishly, you're damn right I'm bored. You haven't moved 12 steps since this whole thing started. I expected some action, you've just ended up fighting two little girls that I could beat while I was hogtied. Naruto frowned, well yeah, they suck. That's why I didn't try fighting them. Why waste energy beating them when I could let them beat themselves? Anko pouted, I wish someone would come out here to kick your ass so I can enjoy myself. Naruto chuckled, keep on dreaming snake lady. I'm doing this to prove a point if you didn't know. I'm proving that they can't beat me, that kind of implies that none of them are going to get a good fight out of me. Naruto noticed someone coming from the tunnel for his next fight. Joji and Shikamaru watched Ino being carried off after Naruto was declared the winner. Joji was watching in shock as Naruto had shrugged off her family technique like it was nothing, Shikamaru, what just happened? Ino hit him with Shintenshin didn't she? Shikamaru nodded, yeah, she hit him head on, she was in there good. He must have a strong will like Sakura had to break out of it or something. Joji nodded, but what about all of that stuff she was screaming? Slaughters, tortures, beatings. What does all of that stuff mean? Shikamaru watched Naruto retake his spot, I don't know but we have a real concern right now. We don't know who's fighting him after this. Look at him, he hasn't had to do anything at all and he's already won two fights. Asuma walked up behind him and placed a hand on their shoulders, don't worry guys, he's fighting Kiba next. Even if he doesn't lose, Kiba will wear him down enough for the next fight. Kiba was smirking as he set Akamaru down beside him, finally, time for my rematch Naruto. You won last time, but you can't do it twice, I'm getting my win back. Naruto said nothing and looked to Anko to start the fight, match 3, Naruto Uzumaki vs Kiba Inazuka. Hajime. Shikyaku no Jutsu, 4 legs technique. Kiba crouched down on all fours as his features became even more feral. This was all well and good for about three seconds until a blue shinobi sandal implanted itself under his chin and sent him flying backwards. Akamaru ran to his master, barking frantically as Kiba slowly pulled himself to his feet. Kiba shakily stood up, yeah, yeah, I'm alright boy, he just caught me off guard. He looked up to reveal that Naruto was nowhere in sight. Kiba chuckled before jumping out of the way as a pair of hands broke through the ground he was standing on. Kiba laughed as he dodged the hands, I thought I told you last time. I can smell you Dobe. You can't sneak up on me. His gloating was cut short as a sharp pain in his back sent him flying forward. Looking up from the ground he saw Naruto standing with his leg extended in a kick. He turned towards the underground figure to see the hands explode into smoke. Kiba stood up and glared at him, I had your scent. Where were you? 
There was no way you could get the drop on me. Naruto lowered his leg and gazed out coolly at Kiba, you should quit out of principle. If this was a real fight then I would have killed you just now. Kiba growled at Naruto while he just looked at him. Just because you can identify that I'm in the area means jack shit if I'm too fast for you to pinpoint my location. Kiba hurriedly grabbed a pill from his pocket and threw it at Akamaru, remembering his opening troubles when it came to moving too slow. The little dog turned red after swallowing the pill while Kiba provided him some of his chakra, Juujin Bunshin, man beast clone. Kiba pulled out his smoke bombs and threw them at Naruto, engulfing him in smoke, remember this Naruto. Well here we go again. Kiba and the transformed Akamaru ran at the smoke and jumped towards it, Gatsuga, jewel piercing fang. After the twin drills tore through the smoke until it dissipated Kiba and Akamaru stood in the smoke, Son's Naruto, dumbfounded, and surrounded by kunai. Naruto came from his spot in the tree over to them. Kiba saw him walking up with his hands in a hand sign and tried to charge and attack him before running into an invisible barrier that threw him back and numbed his body, what the hell is this? Naruto made some more hand signs before stopping halfway through the last one, you should surrender. This is going to suck for you. Kiba bared his teeth at him, answer me. What did you do? Naruto shook his head, it's not what I did, it's what I'm going to do. Last chance, I'm not supposed to really be trying to kill you guys and this jutsu has the potential to do it. Kiba and Akamaru just kept trying to break through his barrier. Naruto shrugged and made the last hand sign, your funeral, Raiten, Denki Hokai, lightning release, electric implosion. The electric prison glowed white within until it was blindingly bright before the sounds of sharp crackling rang out. Naruto held the final hand sign for 10 seconds before he finally released it, revealing Kiba and Akamaru both unconscious and suffering from electric burns. Naruto walked over and picked up his kunai as Anko checked Kiba and Akamaru's vitals. She sighed in relief upon finding they were still alive and looked at Naruto who was pocketing his kunai. Naruto shrugged. What? I asked him if he wanted to surrender. Did he think that anything I did from that point wouldn't mess him up? Anko gave him a dry look, you know you kids aren't supposed to kill each other out here. Naruto gave her one in response, he's still breathing isn't he? If I wanted to kill him you could have replaced those kicks I landed at the start with my sword. Anko shook her head and smirked, Shusa, Naruto Uzumaki. Naruto glanced at Kiba being placed on a stretcher and returned to the center of the arena, and that's roughly one third of them down. Naruto turned up towards the Junin and gestured towards Kiba who was being carried off, get the point yet. Because before I could swear that you all missed it. Kuranai was stunned. The first time Naruto beat Kiba it was surprising. She had thought it impossible then, but now more than realized that he was capable of it. It was how easily he beat Kiba this time around, Kiba didn't lay a finger on him the entire time. Kuranai clutched the order sheet as she marked off Kiba's name. Tsunade noticed that the crowd was perplexed. They had all been told that Naruto had no talent as a ninja and here he was decimating the best ninja in his class, all of whom except one belonged to prominent clans. Kakashi moved closer to Tsunade. Tsunade Sama, it seems like you expected this to happen. Is there something that you know that we all don't? Tsunade grinned smugly at Kakashi, why Kakashi? Isn't he on your team? Shouldn't his Junin sensei have an idea of what goes on with his students? Kakashi was not in the mood for games, Sunid sama seriously. This Naruto is nothing like the one I was conditioned for when he was assigned to my squad. Something has happened and I can tell you know what is going on. Sunid turned to Kakashi and gave him a serious look, listen Hitaki, all I am at liberty to really say about the matter is that Naruto has rediscovered his potential. This is the real Naruto, if you want to find out about him then go and ask him yourself. If this keeps up he won't be yours to command for much longer anyway. Naruto immediately put his game face on when he realized who he was to fight next, okay, Pop Warner time is over, time to get serious. Shino walked out calmly from the back with his hands in his pockets as he moved up to Anko in a calculated manner. Anko elbowed Naruto in a teasing fashion, well well now wonder Gaki. How are you going to handle this one? No clue, with those bugs on him I won't be able to hide. I wouldn't be surprised if he had one on me already. Naruto spoke under his breath as Shino drew close, I'll let you know when I figure it out myself. Shino stopped in front of Naruto as Anko looked between them, fourth match, Naruto Uzumaki vs Shino Abarame. 
Hajimi. Shino snapped his arms out in his taijutsu stance as did Naruto out of obligation. Naruto stared him down intently as he could feel Shino doing the same from behind his sunglasses. Both boys simply waited for the other to move in order to prepare a counter. After a few minutes of no movement Naruto moved back quickly as Shino released his swarms of insects at him. Beginning his retreat from Shino, Naruto's mind was running a mile a minute trying to come up with a good plan to beat Shino, he won't move, all he has to do is get those damnable bugs on me and he can beat me. He might not even be standing there anymore, it could just be a mushy bunch and bug clone. This is one of those situations where I wish someone was underestimating me. Naruto kept on his heels as Shino kept sending his kikaichu out at him, what can I do? I can't get close or I'll get swarmed. There's no way I can surround him with kunai to trap him after he's already seen it. Come on, what else do I have up my sleeve? Naruto tossed out Shuriken in a probing move. Shino simply raised a wall of insects to block easily until Naruto clapped his hands together, Fuyuten Ripushu, wind release, violent wind palm. The gust coming from Naruto sped up the spinning shuriken and cut right through the wall of bugs. Shino took the hit and turned partly into bugs. The real Shino then appeared from the tree nearby and sicked more of his bugs on Naruto. Naruto's eye gleamed as he judged the distance between him and Shino and simply rushed him. Naruto had closed the distance by simply bullying his way through Shino's wall of insects and continued storming towards Shino. Shino attempted to latch the remaining bugs he had on his person onto Naruto, but the drain from the few amount of insects was similar to taking a bucket to scoop out a lake. Naruto viciously rocketed his fist into Shino's face. Naruto's punch dropped Shino cleanly as his kikaichu retreated into his body to help run damage control. Anko wandered over with a grin on her face, Shusa, the miracle gaki, Naruto Uzumaki. Naruto sighed as he picked himself up and walked over to Anko who was still grinning, that was an ugly win gaki. Your right hand is pretty nasty. Naruto settled himself in his usual waiting position, a win is a win. Shino was my worst possible matchup and I'm just lucky that he was just a rookie or else I would have been screwed and had to step it up. He needs to learn more techniques. Anko was getting interested in this kid, so you're saying the rest of the fights will be easy. Naruto smirked, they'll all be easy, that one was just tough by comparison to what the majority of them will be. Shikamaru watched the medics carrying off Shino and had to let out a groan, how troublesome, he fought four of us and he still isn't tired yet. Neji who had been silently appraising Naruto's fighting since the start of the test looked out at the boy in a thinking fashion, I lost to him last time, and now it seems as if he has only grown in leaps and bounds since then, and he has yet to even draw the sword on his back yet. Tenten who had been next to her teammate throughout the proceedings was amazed by how well he was fighting, where did all of this come from? No one has even touched him yet. I wonder who could be next. Rock Lee had fire in his eyes, oh were it not for my injuries I could test my own youth against Naruto-kun's considerable flames. I will seek him out for a spa once I recover and I cannot I will do 500 fingertip push-ups, and if I cannot do that then I will. Lee enough. Neji stopped that train before it got rolling, we've seen four fights and I still can't pinpoint a viable set label for him. If I had to call him anything I would say he is a mid to close range specialist. Tenten smirked at Neji, wow Neji, I don't seem to recall you trying to analyze Naruto's fighting style the first time you two fought. Neji gave her a small smirk back, that's why I lost the first time. Sasuke was standing alone gnashing his teeth as he watched Naruto basically sleepwalking through his matches, when is it my turn? I want my opportunity to fight the Dobe. Itachi wanted something with Naruto. All of that emotion in his face, it was all directed at him. He barely considered me at all. If I can beat Naruto then it will prove that I deserve Itachi's notice more. The Genin all had their attention drawn as Shizune arrived to summon the next one for their turn against Naruto. Naruto and Anko were in the midst of a short conversation as they waited for Naruto's next opponent, so your style consists mostly of you slowing your enemy down and picking them apart by striking at the throat, groin, and other, soft, areas. Anko nodded with a gleeful look on her face, yep, it's really unpleasant. Want to see? Naruto unconsciously grabbed his groin, nope, I'm good. Who's next? Anko pointed at the tunnel to get him to look. Naruto followed her line of vision to see Tenten entering from the tunnel, okay, number 5, let's do this. 
Tenten walked up to Naruto and faced him down, I'm pretty nervous about this. You aren't a pushover Naruto. I might not win this but I'll give it my best shot. Naruto slid into his stance, and that's all you can really do in the end. Don't sell yourself short, anyone can beat anyone. Anko raised her hand, the fifth match, Naruto Uzumaki vs Tenten. Hajime. Tenten immediately brandished kunai and began tossing him out at Naruto. In the blink of an eye Naruto drew his blade and blocked the projectiles before rushing into attack. Upon seeing him draw his blade Tenten pulled out a scroll and summoned her own sword to engage Naruto with up close. As Naruto and Tenten clashed swords he had to chuckle, a katana, you just wanted that spa you asked me for didn't you? Tenten smirked, I have to see if you're any good at swinging that thing around. Naruto returned the smirk as he began pressing her back. Tenten planted her feet but ended up being pushed through the dirt, gar, this strength, it's ridiculous. He might be stronger than Lee. Tenten lashed out with a kick as she chose to break off the contact that Naruto slapped aside with the flat of his blade, that's your leg Tenten. Don't be so quick to attack, it pays to be somewhat patient. Tenten growled and ran back into trade steel with Naruto again. Every stroke of her blade was blocked or parried and Naruto refused to take advantage of the openings that followed. Tenten disengaged and stomped on the ground in frustration, why are you so good at this? You just got that thing last month. Naruto stood straight up and looked at her, I told you I was an old hand at this. You use a lot of weapons, but have you mastered any? I'm no master, but I was pretty good at this, plus I'm faster and stronger than you, so I can do stuff like... Naruto vanished and slipped behind her quickly to knock her out with the handle of his blade, this. He caught her before she hit the ground and set her down gently, you should have stuck with the long range stuff. You would have lost anyway, but up close is almost tantamount to suicide against a guy like me, unless your name is Rock Lee or Neji, they're the only ones that can hang with me up close. Anko pointed to Naruto, Shusa, Naruto Uzumaki. Man I am getting sick of saying that. Naruto smirked at Anko, well then convince the other five genin to quit. Anko shook her head, you took your sweet time with that one gaki, why not just do that from the start? Naruto shrugged, hey, I get bored too you know. She had a sword, I did too, it clicked, or clanged. Who's left anyway? Asuma was dumbfounded as he watched yet another genin fall by his hand, what is he? How could he possibly be so good? He was just playing with her the entire time. No genin could possibly fight like that. Kuranai checked Tenten off of the list, five down, five to go, this is absurd. He's running right through them all. He hasn't had a single fight that lasted more than five minutes. Kakashi had gotten used to Naruto whooping ass on the genin and was still trying to sort out just what made him this way, did Jiraiya do this during the month he was with him? What am I missing here? Asuma threw his hands in the air, send out the next one, there has to be someone who can beat him. Naruto was mulling his potential opponents around in his head when his next one entered. Naruto saw the unmistakable expression of one Shikamaru Nara coming his way. Shikamaru took a lax stance in front of Naruto as Anko looked at his expression, geez kid, could you look any more excited to be here? The seventh match, Naruto Uzumaki vs Shikamaru Nara. Hajime. Shikamaru scratched his head and made his rat seal, that's because I don't want to be here. There's no reason to fight here. At least during the Chunin exams I had to fight to avoid getting hurt, to get my team to the next stages, and if I had been motivated, fight to get promoted. There's no reason to fight you, there's nothing to gain or lose. This whole thing is so troublesome. Naruto put his hand on his neck and rolled it around, so, quit. Shikamaru shrugged, all right, later. Shikamaru turned and headed back up the tunnel waving over his shoulder. Anko blinked a few times, wow kid. Just, wow. Naruto blinked at Shikamaru's retreating form, holy crap, I just took a freaking shot in the dark. I had no idea that would actually work, I'm awesome. Anko snapped out of her stupor, right? Well, Shusa, Naruto Uzumaki. In the stands, Choza Akamaiki and Anoiki Yamanaka sweat dropped at the results of the fight. Choza looked over to his longtime partner Shikaku, your boy is more like you than you care to mention Shikaku. Shikaku shrugged, hey, have you been watching this crap like I have? He didn't have a chance to win and he knew it. Naruto gave him a way out. The kid must be getting tired of this. 
Anoiki nodded, we've already determined that he can wipe the floor with all of our kids so why are we still here? Choza chuckled, speak for yourselves. He still hasn't fought Choji yet. There are still kids that can fight. This isn't over by a long shot. Tenten, who had woken up shortly after her fight with Naruto, looked at Shikamaru with a twitching eyebrow, you quit. Shikamaru yawned as he made his way to the railing, I didn't see any reason to fight. Neji frowned at his attitude, to prove yourself to all of the ninja and people in attendance. For your clan's honor. Shikamaru looked over at Neji lazily, there's no point. You might think all of that clan honor stuff is a big deal, but me, not so much. I didn't want to do this in the first place, and seeing how he's handled everyone else so far just solidified the fact that I really don't want to fight that kid. Sasuke scoffed, you're just too lazy to fight. Shikamaru glared at Sasuke, I did fight. I trapped him in Kijmei no Jutsu, Shadow Possession Jutsu, the second the fight started. When he rolled his neck he didn't show any resistance at all. My control over the technique isn't enough for me to keep a hold over a certain amount of brute force, the light out here was too much for me to use it effectively, it's around noon, and he didn't even blink. That jutsu is all I had on him, I couldn't have one. Asuma was hitting his head on the wall, damn Shikamaru. I should have known he would do that shit. Why didn't I put him on sooner? Sunid was hanging on the railing laughing, well at least he knows when he's outmatched, maybe he should be a chun and Asuma. Kuranai checked his name off, six down, four to go. Her eyes widened when she saw who was next on the list, oh no. I didn't think it would get this far. Jan. Ken. Pon. Anko pouted at the results, you brat. Naruto slapped Anko's closed fist, it's not my fault you always choose rock Anko. Anko kissed her fist, our good old rock, nothing beats that. Naruto sweat dropped, yeah, sure, why not. Naruto growled in frustration, Kami. When's the next fight? I want to finish kicking everybody's ass so I can get my promotion and go home. Anko looked behind Naruto and turned him around, oh, Hanata's next I guess. Naruto jumped backwards and set himself in his stance. Hanata shakily set herself in her Juken stance and looked out at him, en Naruto-kun. Naruto's eyes hardened, talk later, fight now. Come on Hanata, bring it on. Naruto's eyes bored into hers. Analyzing everything he could find, stripping her bare, this isn't Naruto-kun. His eyes have never been so cold before. There's none of the warmth there was before, just strength, strength that I can't match. Anko noticed the fidgeting of the girl, this girl is going to get destroyed if she doesn't shape up. This gaki will be ruthless once the fight starts. She lifted her hand, 7th match, Naruto Uzumaki vs Hanata Huga. Hajime. Naruto wasted no time and dashed in to deliver a hook to Hanata's body and a side kick to her head, sending her to the ground quickly. Hanata laid on the ground with her eyes welling with tears, Naruto-kun. Could you really hurt me like this? What happened to you? Get up. Her eyes turned onto the boy in question who was patiently standing and waiting for her to get up to continue, there is no way that that was enough to put you down so get up and fight me. Don't lay down and quit, I can accept that from Shikamaru but not you, I thought you had more in you than that. He began pacing as she remained on the ground, I remember watching you fight Neji, and I remember how you fought him. Yes, he was more skilled than you, but you showed fire, you showed that you have drive, and you showed that you have the courage to fight. He stopped and looked at her, not now I have to say. She locked eyes with him again and tried to find the Naruto she had come to love during the days in the academy and again found nothing, none of the upbeat, positive, bright Naruto she had known back then. This one was serious, professional, with the eyes of someone who knew just what kind of world he was living in, the scar simply added onto that. She began to stir from the ground and looked at him defiantly, you're not Naruto-kun. Naruto jerked an eyebrow, excuse me. Hanata's eyes sharpened as she raised her voice, you're not Naruto-kun. Naruto-kun never acted like this, never spoke down to people, he would never use techniques like he used on Kiba-kun. Who are you? Naruto's eyes narrowed at her insinuation, oh I get it. I don't have my head in the clouds and can see things around me for what they are so I'm not Naruto. I can find people's flaws and will actually comment on them openly so I'm not Naruto. I'm actually skilled enough to use more techniques than Cage Bunshin and they don't put me in direct danger so I'm not Naruto. 
Naruto saw her falter with every word he made, I know why you're so upset about it. Her eyes widened, D does he really know? How did he find out? Naruto nodded to himself, you probably saw me as I was in the academy and liked my never say die attitude, how I always got back up and shrugged off what everyone did and said to me. You figured, there's no way anyone can take all of that and still smile and keep on trying. So you thought I was strong. Naruto saw her react as if solidifying his thoughts, well that statement would be accurate. No one can keep on going through all of that and keep smiling, unless you're brain dead or something. Her reaction was priceless, he jaw dropped before she began speaking rapidly trying to rescind the previous thought. Naruto raised a hand for her to stop, this is me. I'm still strong like I was back then, I'm just not willing to take bullshit like I was back then. Taking people's shit and coming back for more with a grin doesn't make you strong, it makes you stupid and weak. The reason people like you and people like me tend to want to get strong is to prove others wrong to spite them, or to get strong enough that no one ever tries to fuck with you again. Naruto pointed at her, that's what you want. You want strength for the second reason. You do, even if it's subtle. You never want anyone to treat you the way Neji treated you during the preliminaries again, which by the way you act and the way you almost took it laying down must happen regularly. You want to be left to do things your own way, for those in stations above you to just let you be to live your life, but you quit. You saw me taking all my lumps in the academy and getting back up and you didn't want to put the work in anymore, you wanted to settle for the strength to just deal with what life handed you, you didn't know that it's impossible for a human being to take that the way I did, and I became an ideal to you, an unreachable paragon. Hanata looked up with tear-filled eyes, no that's not true. It isn't, I looked up to you as someone to be like, someone to strive after. Naruto rolled his eyes, like a paragon. Hanata shook her head, no, not like that. It's because I, I, admire you. Naruto caught on and spoke lowly, you don't admire me Hanata. You admire the idea of me, or the old me I should say. If you had me then you thought that it wouldn't matter if you could never get the desire you had of just being able to deal, that if you had me that I could lend you enough of my own to get you by. Don't do that. I'm not your golden ticket, I'm not the answer to your problems, I'm just a guy with a sword and a whole can of whoop ass. He spoke up now, if you want me to teach you how to fight, or how to get stronger, I can't do that, and I can't take your problems away from you. Do you know why? Hanata shook her head, tears were just about to fall. Naruto smiled sadly, because you can't respect someone that kisses your ass. Hanata, you didn't even try to fight my reasoning for why you thought you saw something in me, you were too afraid to go against me. What if that manifests again in something else later on and I'm not there for you to get a boost from? If you won't defend yourself to me, the person you admire, then how can you defend yourself against others when I'm not even there? Naruto sighed and ran his fingers through his spiky hair, enough of this. This really isn't the time or the place for this kind of thing. This is the time for a fight, now come, give me your best. Hanata let tears fall from her eyes. Naruto had yet to slip into his uncaring face before he saw them hit the ground, Hanata. Her eyes floated up to him once more, prove me wrong then. Show me I'm full of shit. Take an actual step towards changing yourself and fight me damn it. Don't just go with the flow, your life won't let you do that. The things you need and want to accomplish in this world won't just come to you, no one's going to hand you the answers. Everything you want, it's there. So take it. Despite the harshness of his words she looked into his eyes and saw something, concern, something that she had overlooked earlier. The fox in Naruto's head chuckled, nice monologue ninja, you should write movie scripts. Naruto inwardly sneered, fuck you QB that was serious. She needs to get it together, life is way harder than this. Hanata looked shocked for a moment before she wiped her eyes and fell into her stance, activating her Byakugan to begin. Naruto motioned for her to come and she ran in quickly and began to furiously engage him with Jukan strikes, he's right. I need to show that I'm willing to change for good, not just when the situation calls for it. I'll show you Naruto-kun. Despite the potential damage the strikes could deal with just a touch, Naruto was still faster. He was blocking the strikes with the palms of his hands rather than letting her close off his tenokatsu otherwise. Eventually Naruto tired of blocking strikes and shot an axe kick to her hand in the middle of a strike. The kick ended up breaking her hand. 
She drew it back and tried a second attack with her other hand, this time Naruto latched on and elbowed her in the wrist, breaking it. Naruto jumped back as she cried out in pain. He simply stared her down, okay, what are you going to do now? Will you walk away? Hanata hissed in pain of her now useless hands but soon set a defiant gaze on Naruto and charged back into lash out with kicks. Naruto was pleasantly surprised with her last ditch attacks and marveled at the fact that she was flexible enough to launch certain kicks that he knew shouldn't have been possible for the angles he was moving to. Naruto nodded to himself and slapped one of her kicks down to the ground and ducked down before delivering a rising palm strike under her chin, sending her flying and slipping her into unconsciousness, that's better, now let's see if you can keep that spirit this time around. As her body hit the ground Naruto sighed and walked towards Anko who simply nodded, Shusa, Naruto Uzumaki. Naruto retook his position by Anko who was frowning at him, Nai-chan is going to kill you when this is all over you know that right. She loves that little girl like a daughter. Naruto looked up at Kurenai who was glaring heavily at him, he could have sworn she was trying to cast a genjutsu on him via eye contact but he shook it off, well then I should never have had to do that. She should have gotten her on track way before she fought me here. Except for Tenten all of these girls need a reality check if my ass kickings didn't already do it. Naruto looked up to the box, all of you guys suck. I hope the last three can show something here, I haven't even taken a punch yet. I guess I'm not the only genin that got shafted by their sensei here huh? Anko looked Naruto over, getting tired yet gaki. Naruto shook his head, nope, just getting warmed up Anko-san. Anko grinned at him, none of that San stuff gaki, it's Anko-chan to you. You're one interesting kid. Naruto kept himself limber waiting for his next fight, whatever you say Anko-san. Kurenai was gnashing her teeth after watching Naruto's fight with Hinata. He tore her down, goaded her into a fight and then dissected her and kept a straight face about it the whole time, I'm going to kill that brat when this is over. Tsunid glared back at her, be quiet Kurenai and be professional. It was a fight. Mind games are supposed to be just another tool that shinobi use. This isn't a primary school where everyone is everyone's friend and you can hold her hand the entire time. You were the ones that were so sure he wouldn't get this far. Not bad for a dead last, huh? Asuma looked at Sunid, you sure must like that kid ha huh, hokage sama. Sunid smirked at him, why wouldn't I? That's one tough brat down there. Unlike the majority of your kids he has the right idea on what a shinobi is supposed to do. He's loyal, and he's actually pretty pleasant if you didn't piss him off at you. Oh wait, none of you know anyone that ever tried talking to him seriously before. Sunid laughed slightly, I have half a mind to promote him to Junin after this. He's already got Chunin. Guy walked up, Sunid Sama, I admit, Naruto-kun's flames of youth burn brighter than previously advertised, but are you sure? Junin is a whole other league, especially for a child. Sunid looked at Guy with a smirk, well, he's still got three fights left. He'll show you just what league he's in. I think I'll give him some time as a Chunin first, he won't get anything less than that though. I don't think any of the remaining genin can even touch him. Kakashi chimed in, he still hasn't fought Sasuke yet Sunid Sama. Things can change in the blink of an eye you know. Sunid got a predatory look in her eye, so Kakashi, sounds like you still don't think much about our little blonde gaki out there. How about a little wager? Kakashi I smiled, name your terms. Sunid's grin got wider, oh this one might entertain you quite a bit, and I wouldn't really call it a wager, more of a request of sorts. In the crowd the recently released Sand siblings were in attendance, stopping off to watch the event going on in the stadium before returning to their home, their time as POWs now over. Taking their seats they were curious as to what was going on. Kankuro noticed Gara watching down on the field intently. Looking down there himself he saw Naruto standing alone with Anko down in the center, isn't that the kid that caught us? Tamari squinted before widening her eyes in surprise, it is. What is he doing here? Is this all about him? A disgruntled fan snorted, that demon brat is taking on a bunch of the prominent genin in this village. The poor kids, that demon is slaughtering them out there. Gara blinked and locked eyes with the man, Suruzumaki is killing his genin opponents in the ring. The man flinched at Gara's gaze and monotone speaking voice, no, not really. But he's running right through them all. I knew he was hiding something for all these years. 
Temari and Kankuro look confused, Temari voiced their question, why does this place despise the kid so much? Gara simply looked at her and back out into the arena, he is like me. Both Temari and Kankuro were shocked. Like Gara, he has a demon in him too. Why hasn't he ended up the same way that Gara did then? These people hate him, not fear him so he couldn't be killing them. Naruto yawned loudly back in the stadium. He had been here for over four hours and had not been even close to pushed yet, this was more of a light spa to him than anything else all things considered, hell it wasn't even a spa, during a spa you actually get hit. Naruto shut his mouth from his massive yawn and smacked his lips, I'm bored Anko-san, this is boring. I'm tired of beating up on these kids already. Do you think I got my point across yet? Anko smirked at him, now, now Gaki, you still have three fights left so make them entertaining okay. And what did I tell you to call me again? Naruto rolled his eyes and spoke in monotone, Anko-chan. Or, Naruto sighed tiredly, Anko-sama. Anko smiled sweetly at him, good boy, I knew you could do it. Look alive kid, next victim up. At Anko's behest Naruto found Neji making his way into the arena with his usual gait. Naruto and Neji faced each other down and stared at each other intensely. Neji smirked at the blonde, one more time. Naruto chuckled, one more time, Anko licked her lips in anticipation of the coming battle, the eighth match. Naruto Uzumaki vs Neji Hyuga. Hajime. Neji activated his Byakugan and sprung at him suddenly, beginning striking at Naruto rapidly. Naruto didn't feel like risking his chakra by blocking this time so he opted to simply dodge and put some distance between himself and the Hyuga prodigy. This was easier said than done however as Neji was dogged in his pursuit, and any attempts to move without properly breaking Neji's chain of combinations could result in some painful Hyuga jabs in his near future. Naruto shot out a punch at the same time Neji went for a finger jab. Neji diverted his strike over Naruto's fist and dipped it in time to hit him in the wrist. Naruto saw this as his opportunity to move and jump back, shaking his wrist out to get the feeling back into it. Neji kept his focus solely on Naruto, and easily realizing the threat that any time Naruto could have to think and plan was bad, rushed back in. Naruto formed a cage bunshin and kaorimied with it in time for Neji to hit a palm strike to the bunshin's chest, destroying it and allowing Naruto ample breathing room to back away. Neji set himself in his ready stance and let out a breath, I will defeat you this time Naruto. I am not taking you lightly this time around, you have my full attention. Naruto pulled the sword from his back, that's nice, but you can pay me all the attention that you want. You still won't beat me. I'm not the same one-dimensional guy that I was at the Chunin exams. He set himself down and ran at Neji. Neji began ducking and dodging Naruto's slashes. Naruto sheathed his sword suddenly following one of his slashes and grabbed Neji by his ponytail that was flailing about in the melee. With a malicious smirk on his face he jerked around and tossed Neji over his shoulder, slamming him hard to the ground by his hair. Neji held his scalp on the ground while Anko cackled in the background, that ripped a few out by the roots didn't it? Neji rubbed his head as he stood up, that wasn't very honorable Naruto. Naruto shrugged, we're ninja, honor is for samurai and dead men. I'd rather be an ignoble winner than an honorable loser. Neji slipped back into his stance, that may be, but you are in range of my field of divination. A sigh came from Naruto's mouth, fuck, Neji dashed in and began his assault, hack, two palms. Naruto dodged the first two strikes. Neji kept going, four palms. Naruto kept dodging as Neji picked up the pace, eight palms. Sixteen palms. Thirty-two palms. Naruto kept narrowly keeping out of reach of the rapid fire strikes, 64 palms. Naruto's eyes widened as he saw that Neji wasn't stopping his assault. The blistering speed of his hands had Naruto actually worrying about getting hit. Finally Neji clipped him and began tagging him with shots. Hak Hayaku Nijuahachi show 8 trigrams 128 palms. Naruto was knocked to the ground as Neji stood straight up looking down on him. Asuma let out a breath that he didn't know he was holding, finally, someone beat the kid. It took long enough though, I kind of thought he was going to finish there for a minute. Kurenai shook her head, you forgot didn't you? Kakashi and Asuma looked at her curiously and she groaned, people really don't pay attention to him do they? This already happened last time. And last time Neji hit him more than he did this time. 
Asuma dropped his cigarette while Kakashi still looked puzzled. Neji did something like this the first time they fought. Well, how did he get up to win? Neji turned to speak to Anko. Neji stopped however upon hearing a bored sigh coming from Naruto, whoopee, more palms. Yay, Manu Hugas are seriously a bunch of one-trick ponies. Neji turned to see a dry expression on Naruto's face, what are you saying Naruto? You should be beaten after that. Naruto smirked at him, deja vu isn't it? Neji's eyes widened as the same malicious feeling from last time as Naruto kipped back up to his feet, just as quickly the feeling faded and let out a vulpine smirk, you barely hit me. I'd say out of 128 strikes you hit me maybe 20 or so times. Last time you hit all 64 of your other technique and I shook it off. I'm immune to your jukan unless you strike four organs or something and even then it had better be a kill shot or I'll just keep coming. Neji tensed up, well then why did you dodge my earlier strikes if you can just take them? When I hit I still had to have disrupted your tenkutsu. Naruto nodded, yes, but you forget, I can just open them back up. I already did, hurts like hell though, that's why I dodged, those things hurt. Neji was on immediate alert as Naruto charged back in. Luckily Neji performed his kaiten prior to Naruto reaching him. Naruto was thrown back and scoffed, you want to try that again. As he drew the sword from his back Neji prepared for another rotation. Naruto dashed in as Neji began to spin. Naruto channeled wind chakra into the blade of his sword and split right through Neji's shell of chakra, bursting out the other side. Neji stood still for a moment before dropping to the ground as blood shot from the wounds that appeared on his chest and back. Naruto ignored the outraged cries of the people, ultimate defense my ass. Naruto walked over to Neji and placed the blade by his throat. Neji looked up at him with difficulty, h how. Naruto looked down at him, don't worry about it. Sleep. Naruto cracked Neji with the blunt side of his ninjato, knocking him out to end the fight. Anko walked over and called for the medics while Naruto walked over to a grassy area to wipe off his sword, Shusa, Naruto Uzumaki. Asuma was clutching the guard rail tightly, that was wind chakra. How could a genin possibly know elemental manipulation to that kind of extent? That's an elite level skill. Naruto turned to see Choji making his way out onto the field. Joji unwarily stood across from him and got his first eye full of Naruto's combat stare. He felt like he was drowning in the ocean as he looked into Naruto's eyes that resembled the coldness of an iceberg. Joji bit his lip and steeled himself, he was no fool, he had seen what had gone on in all of the other matches. He knew he had no chance against Naruto, if he was strong enough to fight off Shikamaru's Kajime no Jutsu he knew he couldn't match up against him because his strength was really all that he had over most genin. Naruto was faster, stronger, and had too many ways to beat him. But he wasn't going to walk away from the fight just because he knew he would lose. Worst case scenario, Naruto knocks him out and he spends a few hours looking up at a hospital ceiling until his parents come and get him. He knew Naruto wouldn't hurt him unnecessarily, so he could more or less place this in a category similar to sparring with his father, he knew he wouldn't win, but that was no reason not to try his best. Joji gulped and motioned to Anko that he was ready. Anko took her spot between them, the ninth match, Naruto Uzumaki vs. Choji Akamaiki. Hajime. Biker no Jutsu, multi-size Jutsu. Anko had to jump out of the way as Choji immediately went straight into his clan Jutsu list. As quickly as he could he tucked his head, arms, and legs into his body. Nikuden Sensha, human bullet tank. His massive form began its rollout towards Naruto who was swiftly on the defensive to avoid being squashed by the chubby ninja. Despite being in the shape of a massive ball Choji was quite mobile in that form, and was far faster than he was outside of it. Naruto found that the longer Choji rolled the more momentum he picked up. Naruto pumped chakra into his legs to gain the necessary distance to warrant turning around to face Choji. Naruto channeled wind chakra to his fists and thrusted them out linked together, Fuyuten, Fujin Seiken, Wind Release, Divine Fist of the Wind God. The force of the wind jutsu hitting the meat tank sent the rotund ninja flying backwards until he bounced off of one of the stone walls lining the arena. Joji came rolling right back at Naruto who simply stood right in his path and waited for him. When he got close enough Naruto cocked his leg back and gave Choji a chakra-enhanced kick that sent him flying once more, only into the stands this time. 
Joji released the jutsu to avoid crushing the spectators and ended up crashing into the stairs and rolling down them until he finally came to a stop at the bottom. After a few minutes of him trying to regain his senses, Joji shakily stood up and faced Naruto, wincing with some blood coming from his lips, your, strong Naruto. I know I can't win here. Naruto nodded, but the important thing is that you tried. Do you want to continue? Joji looked up in the stands to his father. Chosa knew what Joji was asking him and sat in contemplation before silently shaking his head. Joji turned back to Naruto and sighed, I wish I could. But there's only one way that I can even hope to hang with you and my dad really doesn't want me trying it, it's really dangerous. I surrender. Anko nodded and pointed to Naruto, Shusa, Naruto Uzumaki. Naruto sighed, I kind of wanted to see what you could do Choji. You have some serious potential, I can only imagine what you had up your sleeve, but I understand. Maybe I'll get to see it one day. Choji held his ribs and smiled at Naruto before heading back to the waiting area. Naruto grinned and looked up at the waiting area where the others were watching from. Looking at all of the junin he held up all ten of his fingers and slowly ticked them all down until one thumb was left up before he slowly dragged it across his throat. Guy was marveling at the sheer raw power that Naruto had just shown against Choji, he stopped him with a kick. Just a kick, nothing more. That's incredible, I wouldn't even attempt something like that. Sunid smiled at Naruto and looked back at her subordinates, last chance. Sasuke has to win or you all know what will happen. Asuma shrugged, yeah we do, but I still don't see how that could be a punishment for losing a bet. Sunid chuckled, okay, just keep with that line of thought. Anko noticed the crowd beginning to buzz, mostly over how the last Uchiha would wipe the floor with the demon. Naruto simply stood calmly and waited for the fight to come. Anko really had taken a liking to the kid over the course of the day. He was entertaining to her, whether intentional or not, and he didn't act much like his age. She also realized that he fought like a professional, she definitely had to seek him out for a spa or two after this was all over. Anko nudged him to get his attention, last one Gaki. How are you going to handle this one? Naruto shifted his eyes to her, the same way I handled the rest of them, I'm going to kick his ass. Anko smirked, what? You don't think the Uchiha will pose a challenge to you? She spoke in a sarcastic tone, you think the, almighty, Sharingan isn't enough for him to win. Naruto chuckled, nope. Hell I don't think it'll even help at all here. He can't copy anything I can do. I don't need hand seals to make cage bunshin, even if he had the hand seals for my Raten, Denkai branch moves he still doesn't have the ones for Raten, Denkai in the first place so they're useless, and my Fuyutan Jutsu don't need hand seals either. He can't copy anything I'm actually willing to show here. Finally Dobe. Naruto noticed Sasuke walking up to him. This Sasuke didn't just have his air of superiority over him, he had a tinge of excitement rolling off of him. He was spoiling for this fight, I can finally prove once and for all that I'm better than you. Get ready to lose. Naruto had his arms crossed, if you were really strong then you wouldn't have to prove anything to anyone. I'm just doing this for my career. If I don't show all of these idiots that I'm talented I'll never get a promotion. Naruto looked to Anko who moved between them. She turned towards the crowd, the tenth and final match. Naruto Uzumaki vs Sasuke Uchiha. The crowd roared for Sasuke as a smug smirk came onto his face. Looking at Naruto he flashed the famous eyes of the Sharingan making the crowd roar even louder. Anko rolled her eyes, show off, Hajime. Sasuke dashed in, remembering how poor Naruto had been at Taijutsu all the times that Kakashi had them spar in the past. Apparently he hadn't been paying much attention to the happenings of the day too much. Naruto slapped his initial punch aside and grabbed onto his ankle to pull him forward roughly before hitting him with a vicious clothesline to the throat. Sasuke hit the ground hard holding his throat and coughing. Naruto walked around him slowly and let him get his breath, you know Uchiha, part of me is telling me to just knock you flat on your ass, get my promotion, go home, and sleep until later disturbed. A feral grin spread over his face however, but it's a whisper compared to the part of me that's screaming to flat out humiliate your ass in front of all these people. So get up, because this is a long ass trail you're taking Uchiha, and this is just the first turn bitch. The sand siblings were getting pretty fed up with how the crowd was treating Naruto. The demon just hit the Uchiha. There's no way Uchiha-sama can lose to something like that. It was luck.
This entire thing has all been luck. Damari asked a man nearby, how many fights have there been so far? The man kept his eyes on the current battle, there have been nine so far. The brat beat everyone that was put in front of him. None of them have even been able to touch him. Damari watched Sasuke shakily pick himself up off of the ground, that isn't the same kid screaming all the time from the exams. Kankuro nodded, what happened? I wouldn't have even considered him a threat until he ended up beating us in the woods. Sasuke, just now getting his breathing back to normal, stood and glared at Naruto, how did you hit me so easily? You were never this good before. Naruto set back into a ready stance, well this isn't before is it? You can't hit me fighting the way you do. Trying to beat me with taijutsu would be like you trying to fight Kakashi with taijutsu, except I won't be so nice about it. No gimme shots for you to boost your ego, if you try that again I will be breaking something. Sasuke growled at Naruto, what do you mean, gimme shots? Sasuke rushed right back in as Naruto sighed in response and began defending, face it Dobe. Those other losers couldn't match up to me. Naruto narrowed his eyes and caught Sasuke's fist in his grip before slamming a fist deep into his body. Sasuke dropped to his knees, spitting out blood and coughing once more. Naruto punted him in the ribs and sent him rolling for a few feet, I meant what I said. When Kakashi trained you during the month before the finals he said he worked on your taijutsu and speed, how hard did he hit you? What was the hardest that Kakashi hit you? Naruto picked up Sasuke by his collar and smashed him in the face once more, did he ever hit you so hard that he hurt himself? Did he ever hit you so hard you actually lost consciousness for more than a day? If your answer is no then you're way more under me than I thought. Naruto held him by his collar as Sasuke struggled to get out. Sasuke managed to reel off a shot that hit Naruto in the face, but all it did was force Naruto to turn his head, Naruto quirked his mouth before headbutting Sasuke in the face, sending him falling to the ground holding his now broken nose. Sasuke looked up to Naruto, blood coming through his finger and tears forming in his eyes. Naruto shot a cold gaze downward, you think you're strong but you're not as good as you think. You've been lead to believe that you're Kami's gift to Kanoa, but you're not, you're just another genin with a bloodline, and that doesn't make you special at all. All you had over everyone else was a leg up and an entire village at your back. Sasuke stood back up glaring with death in his eyes at Naruto who scoffed at his attempt at killing intent, I'm done talking to you. Let me show you what I mean the hard way. As Naruto finished speaking Sasuke jumped away, not really wanting to get in close with Naruto again. Sasuke flipped through hand signs and put his fingers to his mouth, Katen, Gukaku no Jutsu, Fire Release, Grand Fireball Jutsu. The fireball launched at Naruto who didn't move. The fireball collided with Naruto much to the approval of the crowd who up until that point were sitting on their hands. Sasuke smirked at the ruin he had created until the fire cleared and a charred log was left behind, remnants of a kawarimi. Sasuke scanned the immediate area swiftly, preparing his body for any response that it could take. He turned his head as he saw Naruto emerge from the tree in the arena, rushing at him. As he turned to react he took a sharp blow in one of his blind spots, revealing another Naruto that was currently pummeling him. The first Naruto who had gotten his notice had dispelled while the other Naruto attacked. Sasuke was reeling from the pummeling that was taking place. The Sharingan was once again proven useless against an opponent that was far faster than he was. It actually made it worse, seeing a punch coming and not being able to defend it chipped away at Sasuke's confidence, but in this case he was seeing entire combinations coming and still ended up taking them. The dull thump of Sasuke hitting the ground again rang out as Naruto burst into smoke. Another Naruto revealed itself standing on top of the walls shaking his right hand out with amusement on his face, good job Sasuke team. You technically beat my cage Bunshin, though he dispelled because he broke his hand on your face, but hey. Who's keeping score here? The Junin were at the end of their rope. This was just too much. Guy was hunched over the rail, his head arched out towards the battle, a cage Bunshin, he was doing that kind of damage with just one cage Bunshin. Soon it had a stone face on as she watched her genin fight, now do you see? Did him running through all of your teams get the point across or do you need more evidence to support his promotion? She faced the Junin seriously, the next time I personally endorse the promotion of one particular ninja you damn sure better believe without question that there is a damn good reason for it. 
Kakashi was frozen in place before something ticked in his brain, I need to stop this before this goes too far. Kurenai shook her head at Kakashi, it's a little late for that isn't it? Kakashi made a move to leave but was blocked by Asuma and Guy, what are you two doing? This can't go on any longer. Asuma sighed in a disinterested fashion, we all watched our own kids get their asses kicked, so you're staying to watch one of yours beat the crap out of the other one. Guy nodded, we all knew the stakes coming into this test my eternal rival. Take solace in the fact that this isn't a death match. Sunid raised her voice, Kakashi, stand down. Do not interfere with this fight. Kakashi turned to her, Sunid sama if this doesn't end soon it will escalate. They'll try to kill each other. Sunid raised an eyebrow, if Naruto tries to kill Sasuke then Sasuke is dead. If Sasuke tries to kill Naruto then Sasuke will end up in the hospital. Naruto won't kill him and Sasuke isn't capable of killing him in return. Kakashi made to speak again but Sunid held up her hand stalling him, just watch. What did I miss? They all turned to see Jiraiya standing in the corner. Sunid frowned at him, how about the whole thing? This is the last fight. Naruto's been tearing through all of these kids. Jiraiya looked out to see Naruto walking slowly down the wall back into the arena, alright, well at least I got here in time to catch one. Sasuke stood once more as Naruto strode towards him purposefully. Sasuke glared as blood dripped down his face, you aren't better than me. Sasuke launched a set of kunai at Naruto who just shifted his body out of the way and kept walking. Sasuke smirked as he placed ninja wire into his mouth and pulled back on it. The wire surrounded and bound Naruto. Sasuke grinned maniacally, Katen, Ryuka no jut. Before he could finish Naruto let out an audible sigh and coated his body in wind chakra to sever the wire before continuing his walk towards Sasuke. The Uchiha in question was utterly shocked as his wire dropped limply from his mouth, his opponent still striding over casually. A faint burning on the back of his shoulder was the least of his concerns right now, he had a juggernaut that he couldn't stop coming right for him. Naruto was whistling a jaunty tune with no expression on his face, further unnerving his dark-haired adversary. He was utterly ignoring the look of fear on Sasuke's face on the outside, but on the inside he and the QB were freaking out in laughter, keep going Kit. Just a little bit more, I swear he's about to piss his pants. Naruto kept his poker face on, I know, but what else can I do to fuck with him? I already made two of his best jutsu look worthless and beat the piss out of him. Unless he's stupid enough to try Chidori I don't think there's any more to do to him. Oh well, time to knock him out. Naruto's footsteps might as well have been thudding off of the ground for all the good it was doing Sasuke to see him coming. His fight or flight mechanism kicked in with a vengeance, what is he? This can't be the same Naruto. Fight him Sasuke, what? He's been overwhelming me from the start. He's stronger. You have more power than him, let it out, show them all your strength. I will, give me more power. Let your rage take over, he is an obstacle to you, remove him. Who does he think he is? I'm Sasuke Uchiha. He's a nobody. He's still the same Dobe he's always been. Naruto stopped his walk as he saw black marks spread across the right half of Sasuke's body. Naruto snorted, that damned seal again, I'm really starting to hate seals. Naruto saw Sunid signal her anbu out of the corner of his eye, bar chan no. Let me finish this. It's still my fight. Sunid nodded and gave the signal to her anbu to back off. Kakashi ran up to her, Sunid sama. Stop the fight. Sasuke is giving in to the seal, we have to stop him. Jiraiya put a hand on Kakashi's shoulder and shook his head, Kakashi, that kid has more experience with that seal than anyone else in Kanoa except Anko. He knows what he's doing. Just watch and wait. Kakashi looked out nervously at the battle down below, Sensei, what would you have done in this situation? Anko-chan stop. Naruto noticed Anko moving to restrain Sasuke until he spoke up, let him get up and fight. Anko looked at Naruto as if he had two heads, kid that's Orokimaru's seal. That tainted thing feeds off of his darkness and amplifies his powers. This isn't a regular fight anymore. Naruto nodded, I know, but just stay out of this for me. I can still run circles around this guy, trust me. Anko frowned and looked at Sasuke who was rising with a sick grin on his face, alright Gaki, but if it gets out of hand I'm stopping this. Naruto nodded as Anko got out of the way once more. 
Sasuke laughed in a crazed manner, I'm feeling pretty good right now Dobe, let's see you match me now, with my new power. Naruto scratched his head, well for me to match you, new power, I'd have to hold back even more than I already am. Naruto let a vicious smirk come onto his face, you know I really hate that sealed team, I have ever since I first saw it. Sasuke cackled, so you were jealous of my power in the forest when you first saw it. I should have figured so. Naruto chuckled, no I saw it before that. You see I was jumped by these four assholes from Otogaku a long time ago. I was beating them pretty easily at first and then this other guy showed up, and they all had your little demon tattoo too. Anyway, they use it and then they all start taking it to my ass, it was five on one mind you, and I barely end up getting away. The last guy to show up, I'll never forget his face, he gave me this scar. Naruto pointed to his right eye. Naruto's eyes turned cold, I can't seem to get my chance to get square with those guys, but you're here, and you have it too, so you'll be a decent substitute for me to vent on. Sasuke snarled and ran at Naruto, speed jacked up to the next level. Naruto had been holding back a bunch, because the second Sasuke turned that seal on and came at him it was like the start of the fight, only cranked up to level 11. Every time Sasuke missed a punch, Naruto made him pay with shots to the body, shots to the face, and thrusts to the throat. Every time Sasuke threw a kick Naruto batted his legs with elbow blocks or would parry with his fists to Sasuke's shins. Sasuke simply couldn't move fast enough to hit him, and Naruto's counters were so sharp that the Sharingan couldn't even help him. Every single one of Naruto's counters came with the intent to end the fight and if Sasuke wasn't fighting like something reminiscent of a berserker he probably would have dropped ten times over by then. Sasuke pulled out a kunai and began swinging at Naruto with intent to kill, the mostly civilian crowd knew nothing about the seal, or about Sasuke's lunacy and were screaming for Naruto's blood. Naruto simply kept out of reach and stung him repeatedly with counter hooks and blazing kicks to back him off. Naruto finally grabbed him by the wrist holding the kunai and began wearing his ass out. With one hand occupied he still had one hand free to wail on Sasuke barehanded and ruthlessly. Naruto's fist bounced off of Sasuke's face with every word he spoke, grunting in effort, you, want, my, life. Naruto, content with turning Sasuke's face into hamburger, pulled him forward and punched him in the face as hard as he could, sending him rolling backwards awkwardly, you aren't enough of a shinobi to lick my boots you spoiled, power borrowing, jutsu thieving piece of shit. Naruto roared at him, get up. Get up so I can make you suffer. I hope Orokimaru can feel every second of this ass hooping I'm giving you because we aren't done yet. Naruto fingered his sword in a manic fashion, you want to use that seal. You want to make your bed with the traitor. I'm extracting my pound of flesh for it you stupid bastard. Sasuke stood with an insane gleam in his eye, who do you think you are? I'm an Uchiha you pissant. You will succumb to my power. Sasuke had electricity surging around his hand with the famous chirping noise in full effect. Sasuke began a full-on rush straight at Naruto, die damn you. Jidori, 1000 birds. Naruto gave a grin that chilled the heart of even the most hardened shinobi in attendance as he set his sword in a waiting stance, come on down Uchiha, I've got a little friend that wants to meet you, no jutsu necessary my friend. Sasuke rushed Naruto down and thrusted his arm, a bursting flash of sparks indicating that he made contact, before coming to a stop on the other side of the whiskered blonde, a smirk on his lips. A short wind rolled through the arena as everyone was standing at attention. Naruto stood straight up and swung his sword to the side as he walked away. Sasuke stood still until blood bursted from his right arm like a sprinkler. He fell to the ground clutching the arm that had been turned into cold cuts, seemingly by Naruto's sword. Anko blocked out his wails of anguish and agony as he reeved on the ground. Anko pointed to Naruto for the final time, Shusa, Naruto Uzumaki. The crowd remained silent as the only sounds going through the stadium were the billowing wind and Sasuke's cries. The medics hustled out double time to stanch the bleeding from what was remaining of Sasuke's arm and carry him to get emergency treatment. Anko caught up to him and saw an uncaring look on his face as he went to sit under the tree, hey Anko-chan. Anko jerked her thumb in Sasuke's direction, a little much wouldn't you say Gaki. Naruto looked at Sasuke being carried off, nah, builds character. He's lucky he's still even got that arm. Anko shook her head, what the hell was that anyway, you beat that jutsu with a sword. 
Naruto grinned up at her and showed her the bloody sword, wind manipulation. I love my element so much, it's a, uh, efficient. Wind trumps lightning and his control over Chidori was shit in the first place so he never had a chance. As all of the genin that had not required hospitalization, the Junin sensei, Jiraiya, and Sunid made their way over to him. Naruto was currently sitting in the shade while wiping the blade on the grass. Asuma walked up to him first, how do you know about elemental manipulation? That isn't something that a genin should know, when did you learn it? Naruto quirked an eyebrow, if I told you it wouldn't matter because you wouldn't believe me. I can do it, I can control it, end of story. He sheathed the sword back onto his back and sat patiently. Kuranai frowned at him, you were unnecessarily brutal against your opponents. She crossed her arms under her bosom, you seriously damaged more than a few of your fellow genin. Naruto glared at her, it's called efficiency. What kind of junin are you calling that brutal? I was going easy on them, I could have killed all of them, Sasuke included. As a matter of fact, with the exception of Sasuke and maybe Kiba I didn't even hurt any of them that badly so what are you on about? She glared at him and he gave her one right back, unflinching. He stood up and tried to get around them, if you're all just going to bitch about how I fought today then save it. I won, they lost, I owned them all. He turned to the kids close by, no offense, but come on, you've got to admit it. Kakashi stepped forward, Naruto, what you did to Sasuke, Naruto was about to open his mouth to bitch Kakashi out until he finished his sentence, I completely understand. Naruto's eyes widened in surprise as Kakashi put his hand on his head, Chidori is a killing technique. I'm sorry, I made him promise to never use it against a comrade and he tried it against you, you did what you had to in order to defend and win. The fact that you left him alive in the first place shows me you value comrades. Naruto shrugged, I don't really consider Sasuke a friend or anything, but as long as we have the same headband I have a duty to keep him alive. What about the cursed seal? Kakashi's eye widened this time, you know what it is. Naruto nodded, I've had a run-in or two with Orochimaru too remember. He didn't need Kakashi knowing he stole information directly from Oto's base in his years prior. Jiraiya walked up, I need to do some more research on it. I still don't know how to remove it yet, maybe if I study Sasuke's I can get some new information, sorry Anko. Anko nodded sadly as Kuranai rubbed her shoulder. By now the crowd was filing out, grumbling disappointedly about how the demon brat destroyed the competition. Naruto snorted, bastards, they could have at least stayed to hear the results. Sunid walked over and ruffled Naruto's hair, much to his chagrin, good job Gaki, you've earned your promotion. I'm sorry, but you can't make the jump straight to Junin right from Genin. You need experience as a Chunin doing higher grade missions first. Naruto would have complained but he needed to keep his cover. No one needed to know he had experience with elite missions and he couldn't just use that as a bargaining chip for an unnecessary promotion. He was a Chunin now, and that was good enough for now, I understand. So I guess I'll get my vest later. Sunid smiled at him. Good work Gaki, I knew sticking my neck out like that for you was a good bet. Naruto grinned and began walking away from everyone to leave, if you'll excuse me, I haven't been home in a week and I need to get reacquainted with my lumpy ass mattress. If you need me you know where I'll be. Later. All of the genin that were still conscious shouted words of congratulations to Naruto, who simply waved over his shoulder and shunshined away. Asuma shook his head, okay, I'm a believer, that kid is scary good. He turned to Sunid, okay Sunid Sama, what are the terms of this agreement you wanted Kakashi for? Sunid smirked, follow me to the Hockage Tower and we'll discuss the terms, you can all come, you might find it interesting to say the least. That will be it for this video if you want more comment down below, like, subscribe. And see you guys later.